Where's your pants? Welcome back to another brand new episode of Dying with the Brooches. Today we're going to be giving the Peach Creek Cobbler from Ed, Ed and Eddie the old college pie like a real son of a shepherd would. Now I'll confess I've never made a cobbler prior to this, however I gotta say after making it, it's pretty dang good. So enough stalling and let's get into this. To begin with, get yourself 4 fresh peaches and place them into a sauce pan or bowl, or whatever you have. We need to peel the fruit, so fill the pan with boiling water and leave them to soak for around a minute. Once done, the skin should be able to come right off, which makes our life so much easier. From there, just cut the peaches up into different parts and place them into a base. Sprinkle with light brown sugar, cinnamon, or mix spice, and vanilla extract. Also, just a few splashes of water. Then place it in a 170 degree oven while you make the topping, which you'll be doing by adding 80 grams of butter sliced into cubes along with 185 grams of self-raising flour and 80 grams of golden castle sugar. Put that all into a food processor and pulse until you reach the consistency and milk of breadcrumbs. Once you get to that point, add 125 milliliters of raw milk into the mix and then pulse until we get this weird dough thing that's not really dough, but at the same time we're gonna cool our dough. From which we're gonna spoon blobs out of and then put it on top of our peach base so it just taken out of the oven. Now when you spoon it on top, just make sure that you leave a few gaps in between the dollops, but other than that, Go oh, wild, just as long as it ends up looking like a B-Tech mountain range, when you're finished you're good. Sprinkle the top with some demonera sugar and slam it into the oven for about 40 minutes. Have the exact same heating you had at before. Serve with some custard for a pretty good dessert which you can name your high school American football team after. But if I'm being completely critical, while I was eating it I could only think that it was just a crumble with extra straps. It's just long so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make ourselves a better crumble using my old family recipe. So let's start by peeling a cooking apple and cutting it up like we did in the apple pie episode and placing it in the same base as we did with the cobbler. Dust it with some sugar, some cinnamon. Make sure it's not paprika. I nearly did that once. I'm a fool, thanks for asking. And then it's time to start crumble making but we're gonna do it the way I'm sure Danny Anton Rucci intended by hand. Get 90 grams of plain flour and an equal amount of wholemeal flour, put it into a mixing bowl, add the same amount of butter, and then rub it in with your fingertips until you get the same breadcrumb style you got in the food processor. Then add 80 grams worth of soft brown sugar, mix it in by hand as well, then just pour it over your apples because you're well done. Place them into the oven for the same amount of time and the same temperature, or possibly my favourite dessert ever devised by mankind that's totally worth selling out on the streets for 25 cents. Alright, thanks for watching. Just a little note about the crumble is that it's super customizable, and over the years I've changed and adapted it many many times. I've decided to keep it simple and only just use some permissions that were going out for best. Did I say permissions? I meant to say persimmons. But yeah, just make do with whatever you have lying around. Things that are going out for best. Pretty useful, that's what I usually do. But things that I wouldn't let find include today's batch of roaches pickings. Now that his review of Sword and Shield is done, I have to tell you how much I love Radical Soda. That video series of his is just sublime. Personally, for me, I just couldn't stand how soulless Sword and Shield looked, so I never bought it. But Soda's series on it gave me an outsider and inside look into what the game had to offer. That being not much, but still, the little speech at the end of the video is uh, pretty perfect in a sad way. You can just hear how broken he is. As a Pokemon fan, I kind of relate. But he also does other things around video games, so I said check. Check, really. My voice is terrible today. But um, check him out if you haven't already. But if you want to laugh at more dumb noises, go check out my man Poke. He's the uh, funny homo faceless man from SMP Line. Honestly, I love this man's content as well. I got into him with his first Danganronpa video around the time I beat B3. I've been watching him ever since. He's just got a pretty unique style of comedy that's replicated in all, most all of his videos. It's like, oh, it's, it's funny, or more oh, yeah, he is, or... But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, like, today's video. Uh, please like and subscribe, it'll be, like, pretty useful to me. Uh, you know, as uh, according to YouTube statistics, only 20% of people are actually subscribed to me. Or you can join my Discord, or ring the bell, or do anything, honestly. Just anything helps me out at this point. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. See you later. I hope. Oh, I think so.